Okay, so, um, so basically after all that had happened, we got like a month later because we were getting threats from everyone saying about this person and that person and that person. And if you turn them in, if you, if you testify at court against them, then we're going to, you know, they're, they're going to retaliate and people are going to get killed or hurt, et cetera. They're trying to even bribe us and say that we'll give you like two or three thousand dollars just to move and relocate. We were like, fine, you know, just give us that. Cause I, we went in and out of Oklahoma anyways. All the tweakers, dope. Cops are stupid. Some of them, not all. Some cops are nice here. But, um, there's certain cops here that suck. They really do like the one that his son, so it gets away with all that. And then there's other cops that have, you know, tood, attitude, bad attitudes, whatever. But, um, anyway, so we ended up leaving. And then that's when it was basically two months after it was a month almost after we had left and it was basically like a little over two months or three months or whatever around that time since the uh since like uh the raid and that's when the police knew that we had left and they had to issue a warrant for our dad for the dope so we had to come back he wanted to we didn't want to but he was like he mm, didn't even have to like they wouldn't have expedited for a couple of dollars of felony dope whatever but anyways, he just wanted to come back for his stupid girlfriend who ends up, him and her end up breaking up later anyways. And she, you know, and he falls for every single freaking female dope fiend. And it just pisses me off. Like, sorry, God. But it just makes me mad because then he chooses them over us. He chooses them over his relationship with God. He chooses them over his health. And he's out there and he's still with all those tweakers. And it makes me angry and, and sad. And all I can do is pray for him now. And he's still out there to this day. But, um... Anyway, so the rest of my documentary stuff, um, so that was in the end of 2015, and then we basically, we went, like, I convinced our family to leave with only, we were supposed to have, like, a thousand dollars to leave with to go back to California, but, and then places to stay, but as, like, a week or two drew more of time before we were actually left, we ended up only having, like, three hundred dollars to our name, and we had to leave the three cats behind, we had to leave one of our two dogs behind. And so it really made me mad and, you know, and, um, uh, basically everything else just sucked. And we, we left with $300 and I panhandled, I held signs, I, I did everything I could. And we went to shelters and missions. We didn't stay in no shelters. We always like had a room every night, except for one night we had to sleep in the car, but we had the money by, for a room by like two or 3 a.m. or something like that, maybe 3 a.m., but we didn't want to get a room for a couple hours, so we waited till like, 9 or 10 a.m. that morning and actually paid for a room for a whole, you know, 24 hours. And, um, but we made it to California off 300 bucks and for three weeks over for basically off 300 bucks because every day I panhandled, every day I held signs, and every day we prayed, every day we got out the room by 11 or before. We were always, you know, I was always busy every day. Just there was a couple times here or there where we had the money we needed, you know, by two or three, you know, and, and we had, you know, such and such time and we had food and we had, we had everything we needed. God always provided for us. It was a blessing. This one time we were $2 short, like we were five bucks short for our room. And I went to the gas station right next to the room and we had our truck right there and everything. And my dad and my brothers and our dog and everything. My dad, my brothers, our dog and the truck and the, the tarp that had covered everything in the back of the tailgate, whatever, the bar stuff. So they were parked in the parking lot and I went to the pumps, the gas station and started talking to people. One guy gave me three bucks. Another guy said no. And then basically um i went up to this couple and there was an old lady in the passenger seat and then there was this guy pumping gas something told me just go ask him you know worst thing i could do is say no and that's how it always is you know well, a, sh a closed mouth doesn't get fed so i went up and I asked him i said sir i hate to bother you you know such and such we just got here from oklahoma and we had only a couple dollars to our name and we were told we were going to have a place to stay and we didn't and et cetera. I said, our, you know, my family and I, we have, you know, we're just $2 short for a room for the night. If there's any way you can help us, et cetera. And, you know, he, he at first he was like, just put his hand out. Like, like, let's see if I can, I can't. Well, anyways, he put his finger out, like his hand out. I was like, just a second. And, uh, so he, you know, I was like, okay. And then he was like, go as he was pumping gas, he was like, okay, go ahead and tell me. So I told him the situation. And basically, we're supposed to have just different one of us. Like, I was going to stay at our cousin's. And then our, one of our dad and brother was going to stay over at um, either our uncle's or our sister's. And then our, another brother or something was either going to stay with me or was going to stay 
at our uncles or our sisters as well, and et cetera. Like, you know, we had multiple family, you know, in California, but everyone turned their back on us. And in the end, our cousin was like, you guys can stay in a tent in the backyard. Because that was the deal. We weren't trying to sleep in the living room all over. It was crowded where we already had all these, you know, tweakers staying with him. We were just wanting somewhere to sleep. So we are like, can we just, what if we go buy a tent, you know, and our family just sleeps in the back of the tent. And he was like, fine. And then later on, as we're on our way, he changes his mind. So it's like, whatever. And so all that stuff with all of our family just made me mad. And so that's why I don't care about much of them anymore. Like, I love them, their family. I just love them from a distance. I don't care no more. And so, uh, anyway, so I'm trying to think. My mind's going blank. So we were uh, there, and the one guy gave me, the one guy at the gas pump gave me 80 bucks. I didn't believe it. Like, at first, I, I didn't even count. I just, you know, when he handed it to me, I just said, thank you so much. God bless you, such and such. And because that was before I started with all the phrases, Merry Christmas or, you know, God loves you and et cetera. So uh, I was just, you know, like, God bless you. Thank you so much. And um, so I didn't know how much it was. I just walked into the truck and I told my family and they was like, you get the, note, the money. And I was like, no, I was all sad. And then I pulled it out and I just threw it at them. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, so how much is that? I knew it was 20 or more, but, and, uh, I didn't know how much. And they said it's 80 bucks. So there was some nights that we did drink a, a bottle in the room some nights because, you know, yeah, I mean, for me, all the, the pressure, the anxiety, the not, not knowing to going out there, busting your butt, paneling, begging people, it kind of sucks and takes a toll on you. And there's no excuse for using that money sometimes, but we always had room. We always had a room. We always had food and everything that we needed and gas and et cetera before we blew any, you know, $10 or whatever on alcohol. We always made sure we had all the important things we needed. If we had 20 or 30 bucks left at the end of the day, or, you know, I guess even 10 bucks at the end of the day, then sometimes we still used it. Just, you know, we didn't drink every day, probably every other day. But, um, I mean, so uh, it's like a, it was like a gift I had that God blessed me with because our dad and our two brothers, they would go out and do the same thing, hold signs, and they would never compare it to the stuff that they would make that I would make. They, they would go out there for an hour, maybe get like 20 bucks at the, at the end of the hour from some lady that would drive by and hand them a 20 real quick. But that, they, that would be the only money they'd make or sometimes they'd make like five bucks or 10 bucks. I'd go out there for an hour and one time made like a hundred bucks. Couldn't believe it. So my brother went out there and he made like 50 bucks in that same spot, like for an hour for him. But that was still really good. And he, you know, we both, that was like a hundred and something dollars, almost 200 bucks that we did make that day. So that was a great day, you know, it was a blessed day. And, um, it was a humbling experience and, you know, it's different situations and also to a good feeling to know that, you know, I mean, that God always is there. So even, you know, in the hardest of times and when you're, you know, you're sleeping in a truck and you're like, well, if we don't have what we need by the end of the day, we're screwed. But it, it was never like that. We always had the money we needed. And like I said, the only one night we ended up sleeping in a truck. We didn't have the money till like 2 a.m. We could have got a room for the night, but we didn't want to have it for like six or eight hours or whatever it was. So we had it, got it that next morning, and what we did was instead of just sleeping in the truck, we just drove for a few hours and then got a room somewhere else, like closer to California at the time, because we were in like New Mexico or Texas or New Mexico or some somewhere like that. It was probably past Texas, I can't remember, but um, it, it was a it's a humbling experience, you know. And um, then we uh, then we that's when uh, the end of December we got the. Our dad checked his thing and he had a warrant, so he was like, oh, I want to go back. We got to go back. I got a felony warrant. It's just some stupid crap. He wanted to come back for dope. Um, So that was all 2015. That was blah, blah, blah. Then when we got back, that's when the DA was like, you have to, you know, do this in court, blah, 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 and tell us. And we said we didn't want to testify against the brother because such and such. But they said, you know, they pretty much said if we didn't, we were in trouble too and some other crap. So it made me mad. So we had to, I mean, I don't care what people say about snitches and stuff. Snitches is okay. Like if you do something just to get out of trouble, like if you, if you're doing something illegal, you get caught and then you snitch on someone else. That's what a snitch is. So I'm tired of people saying you're a snitch, you're a snitch. It's like, shut your mouth. You're just stupid. If you weren't out there breaking the laws and doing stupid things, then you mean, you know, I don't go out there and just snitch on people. I don't go out there and blah, blah, blah. But if someone attacks our family, I will testify in court. I mean, if they even make it to court, because I mean, I, I told myself now on, if anyone attacks our family ever again, or, you know, home invasions, someone's going to die and it ain't going to be my family. If I have any say so, and if, you know, if it's God's will, it ain't going to be my family. If I have a say so, 
and and all that other stuff. But I'll leave it right here. So then I got to finish from 2016 all the way until now, which is like four years, but it's, it's not, it won't be too bad. All right. God loves you all. Have a blessed weekend.